Uh, it's good morning. You have three hours of your Sunday morning left. So, and, and spend it with us. Have you seen the hailstones out there? Uh, they would take lumps off you. Well, I'm not going to go out there, am I? No, I'm no, not. Right, no, not with our hair done and the glad rags on, no. <laughs> now, coming up, we look at the big stories making the Sunday papers, including further fallout from this week's Sean Quinn documentary. Uh, in sport, Magic Messi strikes again as Argentina march on into the World Cup quarterfinals. And it was a big win for Leinster last night as they came back to beat Ulster. We've got all your sports later this hour. Menopause affects many aspects of a woman's life. Later, we'll be discussing how it can disrupt our sleep and, more importantly, how we can cope with it. She's the Irish leading lady who's already received critical acclaim at the age of 13. This is for her starring role in Matilda the Musical. Alicia Weir will be joining us live. Now over to Kat to see what she's up to, Kat. Can't wait for that, guys. Well, good morning. If It's the season for giving, so if you're in the, in the mood to volunteer for a special cause this Christmas, we're going to tell you everything you need to know. In fashion, we're focusing on metallics, while in the kitchen, we're serving up a Christmas starter option. How does that sound, guys? Not too bad at all. Just a little light bite before I throw myself into my turkey and ham. Oh, I think I Lizzie has the answer for I didn't even want to know how there anyway. Right, let's check on the news you're waking up to today with Rob O'Hanlon. Thanks, Martin. Good morning. The public would prefer Micheál Martin to remain on as Taoiseach rather than rotate roles with Tom de Leo Varadkar in under a fortnight's time. That's according to a new Ireland Thinks poll published in the Sunday Independent this morning. 43% of respondents said they would prefer Micheál Martin to continue in the office ahead of Leo Varadkar, who is due to become Taoiseach in less than two weeks' time. More than a fifth of those polled are undecided on the issue. Israeli aircraft have struck several sites in the Gaza Strip early this morning, hours after a rocket landed in Israel. No Palestinian group has claimed responsibility for the rocket, which came in a week of escalating tensions in the region. Ten Palestinians have been killed by Israeli security forces this week, including a 22-year-old man whose death on Friday was captured on a widely shared video. The mayor of Hawara said the killing was in cold blood and that Israeli forces prevented Palestinian ambulances from reaching the man before he died. Parents with young babies are being urged to take extra care amid a surge in RSV cases. While most people experience mild flu-like symptoms, the virus can be more serious if it spreads to a young baby. The HSC is advising people to maintain good hand hygiene and consider wearing a face mask if they're visiting a new baby this Christmas. After the last two years of lockdowns, it's thought children may have reduced immunity from all kinds of viral infections. So the three Fs of paediatrics are a really good way, the fever feeding form. And if you've got all three of them, your kid's in pretty miserable. Um, and it's really very reasonable to see uh, your GP uh, or in an emergency, your emergency department, if the three Fs are missing. Uh, but the things that the doctor is looking out for when we see these kids with RSV, are they dehydrated? Are their gums dry? Uh, are they breathing really hard and fast? So we look at for dimples under the ribs, or dimples between their ribs. And they're real warning signs that kids with dimples between their ribs, we want to see them. Uh, and that would often be the dehydration and the very fast breathing are the triggers that bring about 1% of kids with RSV into hospital. Gardy in Ballina investigating the disappearance and murder of Sandra Collins are renewing an appeal for information. Today marks the 22nd anniversary of Sandra's disappearance. She was last seen on Monday the 4th of December 2000 at approximately 11pm in the country kitchen premises on George's Street, Killala in County Mayo. Sandra was 28 years old at the time of her disappearance. On Garda Siakana and the Collins family are encouraging anyone who might have information, which they may have thought was insignificant at the time, to come forward. The world's largest volcano is still causing disruption on Hawaii's Big Island a week after it first started to erupt. Rivers of lava are moving down a hill from the eruption site, with some landowners concerned it may cause fires on farms. The eruption of the Mauna Loa volcano is showing no signs of ending just yet. The world's largest active volcano started to emit debris and molten lava on Hawaii's Big Island this day last week, and the activity has continued since then. Scientists on the island say there's no way of knowing when it will stop erupting. But they say this eruption is showing similarities to the volcano's last eruption in 1984, which lasted three weeks. Officials on the island say no homes are at risk, but some farm owners are worried about the lava streams reaching land, which they fear would then start to burn, putting livestock at risk. A major motorway on the island will be affected if the lava flow makes it that far. It's still a number of kilometres away. 
Scientists say they're gathering data on the air quality on the island on a daily basis as volcanic smog affects the area. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. And in Germany, a traditional Christmas cake festival has returned. Bakers in Dresden danced and baked a huge traditional Christmas Stollen cake to raise money for charity as part of the annual Stollen Fest. Hundreds of residents and visitors flocked to the city as the traditional cake was cut. It's the first time the festival has been held since the pandemic. Now let's check on your morning paper starting with the Sunday Independent. The headline there reads, Public believe gangland and provisionals linked. The paper reports on a new poll which found that nearly two-thirds of the public believe there is a connection between gangland crime in Dublin and provisional republicanism. The Business Post then opens with Microsoft Plan's private power plant on 900 million euro data centre site. It writes that the new gas power plant will be built on an, unprecedented, an unprecedentedly large scale, coming as a response to Microsoft's concerns about constraints on Ireland's energy grid. On the front page of the Sunday Times, Quinn, I know exactly who the arsonists were, the paper claims that former billionaire Sean Quinn has stated he knows the identities of the people responsible for an arson attack on his former companies, which caused substantial damage. On to the tabloids. The Sunday World also opens with Quinn using the headline, I didn't stab Quinn in the back. It states that Quinn recently called to the home of a parish priest who condemned the paymaster behind the abduction of Quinn's chief operating officer, Kevin Lunny, in his sermon, believing him to still be at large. Discussing the same Quinn story as the Irish Mail on Sunday, which leads with Quinn Rao Priest, I was told I'd be next. The paper claims that the priest who challenged the culprits of Ken Ke Ke Kevin Lunny's abduction in his sermon has since been warned, you're next. The Irish Mirror opens on the headline, Losing a Child is the Worst Pain. Uh, the paper writes that the father of a teenager killed in the Cre uh, Creeslock explosion is still in disbelief over the sudden tragedy. And finally, The Sun on Sunday leads with the headline, Murder on the Dance Floor. The paper writes on the side of state pathologist Marie Cassidy to the new season of Dancing with the Stars, quoting Cassidy as saying, It's going to be a challenge as I'm not used to just having fun. Stay with us. We'll be discussing the top stories in more detail after this quick break. You're very welcome back to the show. The fallout from the Sean Quinn documentary continues. While there was interesting news for both the Taoiseach and the Tánaiste in a major new poll this morning, Shane Beatty, presenter of Breakfast Briefing on News Talk and Irish Times journalist Jen Hogan joins us to go through the stories in more detail. Good morning. Good morning. Looking very festive today, I have to say. And where's your sparkle, Shane? I'm wearing green. That's what I said I do for Christmas. Is that I'm green? No sparkle. It's a controversial green, maybe more brown. <laughs> maybe I'm not great on colours, but I, yeah, I need more sparkly tops for Christmas season. Yeah, if you're not, Christmas just, season. You're not rocking the disco ball. <laughs> Someone, in December, I don't know. Someone, when, will you? <laughs> someone who may not be feeling so sparkly today is Sean Quinn in the papers again this morning. Bring us through that. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a flashback of every Sunday for so long. Sean Quinn was on the front of the Sunday newspapers, and obviously because of the Quinn Country documentary this week, he's back on the front pages. So he's given an interview to the Sunday Times, talking about the documentary and also talking about obviously the various different attacks that have gone on around the the border along Ballyconnell and Derry Lynn. So in the Sunday Times today, Sean. Quinn says he knows who carried out some of the arson attacks. He names someone to the paper. The paper obviously doesn't publish the name, but Sean Quinn says that he has knowledge of, uh, it's quoted as a former associate mm -hmm. who may have been responsible for it, which I think is probably reflecting if you were to ask a lot of people in that area, they may have some suspicions about who's behind it too. But Sean Quinn certainly has his suspicions. And he also says he was, because some alleged that Sean Quinn was in some way linked with these attacks, he's always categorically denied that. And he actually says, I was in prison during some of these attacks, so how, how could I have had any involvement in it whatsoever? So it's an interesting interview. Sean Quinn also has a book coming out that he's written himself, so the issue isn't going to go away. He's going to be in the headlines for a long time to come. And a long time to come as well and look at the Sunday world as well and the um, the parish priest who condemned um, the paymaster behind the abduction of Kevin Nunney and gave him a rollicking half last half an hour at uh, bring us through that story. So that's Father Oliver O'Reilly, who people may remember at the time, he gave a homily uh, in the local church, essentially saying that the paymaster needs to be brought to justice. Now, Sean Quinn's wife, Patricia, was on the documentary and she called the priest a backstabber and she said, I hope this goes out on air. So she wanted to be very clear that was her view of him. The media have all week been trying to get the priest, get him to talk. So he's done a couple of interviews um, today and he still stands over exactly what he said. He says the paymaster needs to be brought to justice. He also tells, I think it's the male, that he could be next, that his car could be targeted, 
that he yeah. felt he personally could be targeted because of the comments he had made. And he also says in the Sunday World that Sean Quinn came to the house uh, and the quote there from the Sunday World is he was given a rollicking that lasted mm. half an hour. So there's still a lot of tension yeah. in the community, it would seem, up there. You know, Huge amount of tension. Away. He reiterated, no, in fairness, the priest said he didn't name anybody. Yeah. Mm. And he's reiterated this rep uh, repeatedly, but, um, yeah... He's all yeah. over the papers today, don't we? And um, I suppose next we have the Sunday, <laughs> I mean, the Sunday Independent, there's a poll there that is. I'm not sure how many of our politicians are going to be happy with it, to be honest. Yeah, well, Michal Martin, perhaps, because yeah. he is, the, uh, well, the public to, has said 40... I have 40... to look at it now. 46% <coughs> approval rate, Michal Martin, has no mm. change there. Mary Lou is down 4% yep. to 41. Leo Varadkar is at 39, he's down 1%. And Eamon Ryan from the Green Party is at 22% and no change there as well. And there was core ratings expressed out of 10. Um, I think what's interesting is, though, that we're hearing that 43% of the public want Michal Martin to stay on as Taoiseach. So even though the change is due to happen, um, the, only 34% want Leo Varadkar to come back in. And when you look at, at the time that Leo actually stepped down and how popular yeah. he was at the time, you know, um, COVID for him, he was after steer, was steering us through this ship and people, his popularity soared. Sword, a sword even at that stage and then he steps down and now he's coming back at a time where people don't want this to happen. Mm. They want the current Taoiseach to stay um, as stay on as Taoiseach. So not great news for him. He yeah. won't be happy about it. And also that uh, Mary Lou's popularity, um, her personal popularity has also fallen from 45% to 41%. But look, Sinn Féin are still clearly by far the most popular party. But her own personal popularity has fallen too. So Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you look at the, the, the issues there as well, there's um, following she's had a couple of high profile interviews recently recently, um, um, uh, the most recent one being on the Late Late Show yeah. the other night where a few issues were kind of addressed. She fudged a lot of the major ones there. She did. I mean, the public still want to know how she's financed the, the work at her house. She hasn't clarified that. She said there's a mortgage that's due to be paid off soon, but didn't go into things like that. Also, the, the, the uh, opinion poll showed that the, things like... Um, links with Gangla, nearly two-thirds of the public believe there's a link between... Um, between uh, paramilitary activity or um, provisional, provisional um, activity and gangland crime, she said that it was a scourge on society and absolutely, you know, condemned uh, gangland crime. But. But she, she avoided, uh, some of the questions that I suppose still people still want answered haven't been answered yet, and uh, she'll be disappointed as well to see yeah. her own popularity falling there. Too. Are you surprised if you there, Shane? I, I think the Irish people are just fascinating because, on the one hand consistently yeah. throughout the polls we see that the one change that the figures for Sinn Féin are really really strong and that's repeated through every single poll so on the one hand they want change they want Sinn Féin in power and then on the other they're quite happy with Michal Martin yeah. to stay on as Taoiseach and that's also despite the fact that they say housing is the number one issue they were asked what are the big issues yeah. housing is number one so they want Michal Martin to stay on as Taoiseach I think what it is on the one hand they want change but that's maybe in the future on the other hand right now they want things to stay the same a and leave Michal as Taoiseach and not yeah. change over December 17th to Leo Radcar. So it's very interesting. The cost of living one as well. Yeah. I mean, less people or fewer people now are saying that they're worried about the cost mm -hmm. of living than they were in previous polls. So half were worried about the cost of living. Now that's down to a third. Over 60% say they're not struggling with their bills. So we talk about cost that's of living. But still 40% prices. are struggling with their Indeed, bills, you see. But, so. Yeah, but the majority of people say now they're not struggling with their bills, despite the fact we talk about cost of living every single yeah. day. It's an interesting poll. There's lots of reading in it. And the, mm. even with the same, it was 27% was the same. They're, they're, not, they're uh, not planning to reduce how much they spend at Christmas. So the majority of people are still planning to uh, spend as much as before at Christmas. So it's a poll full of contradictions in lots of regards, you yeah. know, because you're reading these things were, and it's con contradictory even to what we're hearing in the news. You're hearing, like you said, about the, the cost of living crisis and how the public are really feeling it. Um, we're, we're constantly talking about this, particularly the energy bills are coming out and the shock and horror you're seeing across the places people receive their energy bills, but at the same time, uh People are saying that they, a higher proportion of people are not struggling with bills now than, than were at the last poll. It could poll. be a bit of an aversion therapy thing going on. They were so used to hearing about it that we kind of got used to being in a constant state of financial yeah. stress. We're all in crisis, yeah. constantly. Yeah, maybe that's Perfect it. crisis. <laughs> yes, I, I, if I say that word once more, I don't know what I'm going to do, but we're just lurching from one to the other. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what, what can we do at this stage? Yeah. Just grin and bear it as, yes. as long as we can. And you kind of accept the misery a bit and go, that's I'm grand, I'm not as miserable as other people. Our expectations <laughs> have changed. That's I know, I know. It's quite sad when do that. But there are some really 
fascinating findings in that mm. poll, I think, because yeah. I think, as you said, Shane, that more people want change, but do they want change right now? I think they want, want change to, in the future, yeah, perhaps. Maybe mm. just steady the ship for the next few months yeah. and see what happens. Mind then. you, Mary Lou MacDonald yeah. on the Late Late Show was talking about, you know, the best alternative is one that doesn't involve Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, and the whole audience erupted in clapping on yeah. Friday night when well, she said that. This is the most so, popular part. Yes. Yeah. Country miles. There's an appetite that says for a lot. Yeah. Mm. says a lot. Um, no, the <laughs> Microsoft are planning a private power plant on a 900 million data centre site. That's in the Business Post. Now, I read that first and went, oh my God, where are we going to get the electricity for that? But the good news is uh, they're going to actually have their own generator first. I, mean, so I, was, I was about to be very cross. <laughs> very, very cross. kind of is... Uh, Back to the cost of living crisis yeah. in some way as well. It feels like the likes of your Microsoft are trying to preempt an energy crisis here and mm -hmm. say, we're going to look after ourselves, thank you very much. We're not going to rely on the national grid. We're not going to be a burden on the Irish electricity system. We'll generate our own. So they have this big data centre. It'd be in blackout situation if any more of them are built, for God's uh, sake. Well, this is it. So they're going to put a power plant on the data mm -hmm. centre mm -hmm. site so that they can generate their own. I mean, you would hope with this that if there was to be a crisis that we can tap in to these big companies and say, here, will you switch off your data centre for a while and give us some of the energy? I don't think it's very likely, but if we need the support... Well, they're only planning to run, run, the, run the, um, the energy, their own energy centre, uh, eight and hours a day, 365 yeah. days a year, but eight hours a day. So if that's the case, there you go. There's a load of, a load of spare <laughs> hours. I suppose the interesting thing is when you look at, there's been so much bad news around um, tech, the tech industry mm. in recent times, it's going to cost an extra 100 million to put this uh, fuel pot... Uh, fuel mm. PowerPoint in place it, or power plant in as well. So when if, if they're putting that level of investment into it, maybe it's maybe they're it's going good nowhere. news. Maybe they're going nowhere. It's, I suppose a little bit of security you would hope for the yeah, future. They have fifteen data centres at the moment, so it's no harm to have one generator for a decent one. Yeah, one to, of them, that they can guarantee their own supply yeah. and that's what they're trying to do with this. Yeah. But you're right, I mean, we, we're hearing so much about tech companies, job losses, layoffs. Mm. Intel are saying to people you can take some time off if you want to at the moment. And yet we have investments like this where you have big companies who we've gotten used to their taxes, by the way, and their yeah. investment mm. in Ireland. They are still in some way committing to this country. Now, we're not mentioning the environment here at all. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of yeah. people <laughs> will be jumping up and down going, here we go, more power yeah plants in Ireland as well but from a, an investment point of view it could be seen as a positive that they are here to stay. Yeah. Oh god well so there's some some small little chink if, if it is a good <laughs> happy Christmas. Trying, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying I'm telling you my, my brain is scrambled from everything in the papers this morning I'll tell you so it's lurching from one crisis to the other anyway thank you yeah. so much thank for you. joining us on the show and next time I believe you better have a Christmas jumper on I'll be very yeah. I'll be very <laughs> disappointed. Oh sparkly top thank you <laughs> even elevated a little bit more right up next we have our first casualties from the World Cup knockout stages and Leinster recovered to record a big win last night in the rugby we take you through the Sunday sports updates next. Welcome back as we head into Christmas season uh, many people may be looking to give back. Here to tell us how she's benefited from the help of volunteers is Mum Tracy Wilkie alongside Emily Burke from the Wheel Charity. Thank you so much for joining us. Oops. Emily can I just ask this is Christmas, obviously, it's the season for giving and people are looking to make, you know, more generous donations. So tell them how they can get started and how they can help this Christmas. Yeah, so at Christmas, I guess people are people are looking to give back in lots of different ways. Um, I guess what, one, as you've mentioned, is to donate to a charity that, yeah. that means something to you. Um, but, you know, that's that's not necessarily something that, that everyone's in a position to do. Yeah. Um, so there are loads of organisations that are always looking for volunteers, um, both around this time of year and all through the year, when, frankly, it can be can be even harder to get volunteers um, yeah. at other times. But, um, you know, really you can focus on whatever is, is close to you or important to you yeah. and get involved at any level, whether it's shaking buckets at a Christmas fundraiser, yeah. you know, maybe you want to uh, go absolutely wild and jump in the sea on Christmas Day and make a fundraiser of it yeah. for a charity that matters to you. It's really, it's, I, I guess what we would encourage is for people to have a look at the, the huge huge range of like activities that are going on in your community. Look at what matters to you and reach out to those organisations and see if they need someone. There's also a brilliant resource that I think loads of people aren't aware of. Uh, we have a volunteer centre run yeah. by Volunteer Ireland in, um, well, at least one in every county in Ireland. Um, and what they can do is they can hook you up with 
opportunities and organizations that, that maybe you wouldn't know about or you wouldn't think to look for. Um, so you, you can get a link to all of those at weact.ie slash volunteer. Mm -hmm. If you go on there, if you're interested, you'll find a link to Volunteer Ireland and, and those kinds of opportunities. And you're involved in the We Act campaign. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, so We Act is a campaign we've been around since last October. Um, it really came about as a response to this, I suppose, massive uprising community activity and volunteering that we saw in the early stages of the pandemic. You know, we saw everyone was so eager to give back. Um, and I guess at the backbone of this, charities and community groups, they're really, they're, they're orchestrating so much of this. They're, they're organizing volunteers, they're organizing staff. They're making sure that people, you know, ultimately get the services and supports that they need. But that work isn't always super visible. Mm -hmm. um, so our campaign is about, is about putting the human faces to that mm -hmm. kind of work, you know, really elevating and amplifying the stories of the people who do this work mm -hmm. um, so that people are, I guess, aware of the extent to which, which this happens in society mm -hmm. um, and also so that people are more aware of the supports and services that are available to them if, if they come to need them. Sometimes that volunteer, all they need to do is just offer a cup of tea to somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that can, that can just lighten up their entire day. Yeah. And Tracy, it's lovely to have you here. And, you. and you've benefited from, from some, some of the volunteer work that's done at the Ronald McDonald House because that has practically become a second home for you over the last while. Tell us about your daughter, Aria. Aria, so Aria was born premature and she's got a lot of complex needs. Aria's prognosis was very poor. She wasn't expected to survive last Christmas. Um, never mind this Christmas, but every hurdle that's thrown in front of her, Looking she... There's little Aria there. Yeah, she's, uh, she's just a little miracle. She's absolutely amazing. She's defying all odds by no end. But unfortunately, we have had a lengthy stay in hospital. So we're coming up on to 14 months now being hospitalised. So we couldn't have... We've been through four different hospitals. Mm. We've been in Ro Ro Ronald McDonald now since May and just like that we couldn't have functioned. We couldn't we couldn't have managed without them. Because of Ronald McDonald we've yeah. been able to stay as a family. We can be close to Aria. We we're we're, we're part of a community. They're yeah. they're like our friends, our family. It's and you, you want to be focused on Aria. You don't want to be thinking That's about, it. you know, where are you going to stay the next night, everything like yeah. that. So it's just incredible what they do. And, you know, could you take us through a typical day of, of Aria's care? And Yeah, so yeah. Aria would, would normally, she sleeps on a BiPAP ventilator. So the first thing, she comes off that in the morning, I'll get her washed, dressed. So Aria's day would be full then of your doctor's rounds, physio, a uh, play specialist, OT, SLT. Her day is quite hectic, you right. know, yeah. Busy girl. And then, yeah, so her day's pretty full on and then you get the text message at lunchtime to say that there's food ready at, over yeah. at Ronald McDonald. Mm -hmm. So that's your break, you know, that's, you can, you, you look forward to that. You, yeah. you get out of the hospital environment, over to the house, have a chat with other parents, you know, get a bit of comfort, a bit of hope. Even some days, yeah. just a bit of banter. Some mm -hmm. days we don't even talk about hospital yeah. and illnesses and we just we just have a laugh and that's really important too. Uh, yeah, so no, that would be Aria's typical day. Back then, back, if we have a really good day, if she's in good form and stable, mm -hmm. we can get ours out and we actually take her over to Ronald McDonald House, which is always, she's always greeted very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she's got, she, she, she's got a name. She, uh, uh, aside from Aria, she's Aria... The, the magic baby? She's the magic baby, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there was another child in Ronald McDonald and she, Aria, has overcome a few near-death experiences. But she got COVID. She had COVID. She's had rhinoenterovirus rhino three times. She's had aspiration pneumonia. She's had cardiac arrest three times. Oh, my goodness. She um, has currently, she's have had seizures, um, pretty bad seizures. Mm -hmm. She has spent a, a stay in PICU over Halloween, which was quite rough on her, was she was in critical situation, yeah. but she has pulled through it all. So when we'd bring her, when we'd get her bounced back, stable, yeah. and over to Ronald McDonald, this child would say, the magic baby's back. She's oh. just magic. And it has stuck to her. She's actually called the magic baby in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, the, the motto of the Ronald McDonald House, like when I, like when, when I, I was reading about it uh, last night, and it, it actually stopped me and my eyes filled because it's, We've got you. Yes, yeah. yes. The three most powerful just, words that I have heard this year. Yeah. So reassuring, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd say the staff probably feel like family at this stage, you know, that's are. emotional support on a daily basis. They are, they're, yeah. they're absolutely amazing. We've yeah. got a house full of sisters, aunties, uncles, even <laughs> grannies, you know, we have, we have it all. Um, it's just, it's amazing. They're always there. You can pick up the phone if you're having a bad night and you don't want to actually be in the communal area. Mm -hmm. You know, you always could pick up the phone and call someone and say, you know, I, can we have a chat? Um, they're absolutely amazing and that logo we've got you, same yeah. as yourself, it's the three most powerful words I've heard this year mm -hmm. and I feel it's very important. Ronald McDonald set together a wellness programme for us so every Wednesday we get involved in something like Reiki or yoga, oh, a parent guilt workshop, yeah. a lot of these things that brings us together yeah. to, to get involved in something outside illnesses yeah. and the fact it's a very common situation mm -hmm. because it it lets you know that you've been seen. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, they, they see us. Mm -hmm. They see our family situation. Mm -hmm. You know, they see the whole the whole, the whole unit. Um, That's the magic of the volunteers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and the volunteers are the super glue, mm -hmm. aren't they, yeah. Emily? Mm -hmm. if, if people are watching us right now, mm -hmm. And they want to volunteer. How do they do it? Just remind us again about it. Uh, yeah, so as I said, your local volunteer centre is a brilliant first part of, port of call. Um, you can also think about like where your own strengths lie, because I think maybe sometimes we have quite fixed ideas about what, what specifically volunteering is. You know, maybe volunteering in a soup kitchen or something like that. Um, but there, there are roles for everybody, whatever, whatever your strengths are, you know. If you were a brilliant listener, maybe you'd make an amazing helpline volunteer. Mm -hmm. If you're a brilliant talker, on the flip side, you know, there are organisations who, who set older people who might be vulnerable to loneliness or isolation. Yeah. You know, you can make social calls to them. If you're brilliant with teenagers, maybe you want to run workshops in schools. You know, there's, there's something for your strengths, whatever they are. Um, so, as I said, if you go to weact.ie slash volunteer, there's loads of links to loads of information about where you can go from can there. Just to ask you mm -hmm. about this little This, little, this, this little. is Barogue, yeah. Barogue. So, when you come into the house, there's a Barogue on everybody's bed. And Barogue is for a hug, so there he is, can have oh. Oh. He's a present. Oh. <laughs> you can't be taking Ari as Barogue. No, Ari oh. has her own Barogue. Oh, she's yeah. She's going to fight over this. Yeah. We're definitely going to fight over this. I just want to ask, how's Ari doing now? Like, Ari is doing good, yeah. So yeah. she's um, obviously she's we're dealing with seizures at the minute. We're trying to get those stabilised, but no, she is she's holding her own, and we fingers crossed we are hoping to get home in the new year. Yeah. So that'll be exciting. So yeah, but it's the it's the kindness. It's very it's very overwhelming the yeah. kindness in people. When yeah. we see the kindness in people, it puts hope back into our lives. Oh, absolutely. you know that and is. And also when every morning you see Aria smile. That is it. That's, that's you know, what keeps you going. That, that is what keeps that's you going. You like need, yeah. people say it's hard, but then you you look at her and you're like, no, you know, that one smile just wipes away <laughs> all that, <laughs> all that. It's all magic. That yeah, yeah. 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 Magic well, well, we wish you the very best. Thank yeah. you for coming to well, talk to for us. Thanks for having us. Uh, and this thanks is, for our little barrow. Yeah, our little barrow. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to share barrow. I know. Thank Have you so at the set bar again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for more information on how you can volunteer and find a role to suit you, check out weact.ie uh, forward slash volunteer. Still to come, the silver screen's new Matilda, Alicia Weir, will be stopping by. See you soon. Now let's check on your morning paper, starting with the Sunday Independent. The headline there reads, Public Believe Gangland and Provisionals Linked. The paper reports on a new poll which found that almost two-thirds of the public believe there is a connection between gangland crime in Dublin and provisional republicanism. The Business Post then opens with Microsoft Plan's private power plant on 900 million euro data centre site. It writes that the new gas power plant will be built on an unprecedentedly large scale coming as a response to Microsoft's concerns about constraints on Ireland's energy grid. On the front page of the Sunday Times, Quinn, I know exactly who the arsonists were. The paper claims that former billionaire Sean Quinn has stated that he knows the identities of the people responsible for an arson attack on his former companies, which caused substantial damage. Onto the tabloids and the Sunday world also opens with Quinn using the headline, I didn't stab Quinn in the back. It states that Quinn recently called to the home of a parish priest who condemned the paymaster behind the abduction of Quinn's chief operating officer, Kevin Lunny, in his sermon, believing him to be still at large. Discussing the same Quinn story is the Irish Mail on Sunday, which leads with Quinn Rao Priest. I was told I'd be next. The paper claims that the priest who challenged the culprits of Kevin Lunny's abduction in his sermon has since been warned, you're next. 
The Irish Miller opens on the headline, Losing a Child is the Worst Pain. And the paper writes that the father of a teenager killed in the Creasla explosion is still in disbelief over the sudden tragedy. And finally, The Sun on Sunday leads with the headline, Murder on the Dance Floor. The paper writes on the signing of state pathologist Mary Cassidy onto the new season of Dancing with the Stars, quoting Cassidy as saying, It's going to be a challenge, as I'm not used to just having fun. She does like our Coronation Street, though. Does she? Yeah, when she I'm not got sure home. how much fun that dancing lark could be now. It looks like an awful lot of hard like work to me. Yeah, yeah, work. I can't yeah. even ice skate on like, the regular. So, anyway, lads, I found something very interesting about celebrity trivia. A bit of celebrity trivia yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. Very few celebrities, especially in Hollywood, actually use their real names. So, obviously, this is because, you know, if you have another famous artist, actor, whatever, and their name is used up, you want to switch it up. You want something new. So... I've got a couple. I don't know if you'd be able to guess. Miley Cyrus, do you know where her real name is? No. I thought her, she was her dad, no, no, Billy Ray. Billy Ray Cyrus, well, her real name's Destiny. Destiny Hope. Destiny Hope Cyrus. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know, I don't I know, bet, know why. But at least she kept her, her last she name. She kept her last name, because yeah. the nickname came from her dad, Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, he used to call her Smiley. Smiley Miley. And okay. then he called oh. Miley so Cyrus. So she that took the really S off the Smiley. Of and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. and then we've got the rapper Cardi B. Um, she, growing up, she was known as Bacardi because her younger sister was and known she just as Hennessy. Us. Yeah. Yes. He oh, sorry, her, her sister's, sister's called, called after Hennessy. Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're both called after. Wait, isn't Bacardi Brandy or Brandy? And yeah, Brandy and Rome. So her sister was called Hennessy, and then her nickname was Bacardi, so she just called flipped it, Cardi B. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It works. Post Malone got his name off a random rap name generator. His real name is Austin Richard Post. In <laughs> fairness, Post Malone. What? That's like a, Post Malone's that's a bit a strange that's, one. That's a bit it tragic. Is, yeah. well, I'm surprised he's done well. No, yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. Love his stuff. What else have we? Now, I know Michael Keaton, that I love him. He picked Keaton at random because his, obviously, another actor at the t time, 90s prime actor, Michael Douglas, that was already taken. Okay. So, Michael Keaton. His name's actually Michael Douglas. His yeah, real name's yeah. actually, wow. yeah. yeah, his real name's actually think, Michael and, and Diane Douglas. Keaton, I think, changed her name because her... Diane Hall. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that yeah. mental? Yeah. What would your stage name be? If you, oh God. if you had to pick one. Well, my first name is Rose anyway, so I already have an accidental You have name. a stage. <laughs> you have one. Yeah, I'm I, 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 I had to change my name because my dad. I was working on pirate radio. And my dad, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the junior. Yeah, I could get. <laughs> yeah, well, my dad could have got fired mm. because um, I'm named after my dad. So was he Martin King Senior? No, he's Martin Boyle Senior. Oh. So Martin was Martin Boyle. He's not really Martin King. Oh. Well, now, and now you know. <laughs> so yeah, so he could have been yeah. Well, my dad worked in the section in the, the old Post and Telegraph yeah. that closed down pirate stations, and was told yeah, if it's discovered that uh, not just him but all staff were told that you have relatives working in pirate radio, you're under the threat of suspension or dismissal. I'd love to have a stage name. I know you have a really cool name yeah. though. No, well I changed. Well, my last name is about eleven letters long. Well, tell so. me what is it. It's Iradicunda. So you're Katia? I'm in, I'm Katia Iradicunda. No middle name. The Mia was just the nickname my mom gave me and I just stuck it in. So Kat, you, you have see? a stage name? You're like I'm Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I'm, the only, I'm the only one without a stage name. Oh, we'll call you Rose. Oh, no. Don't call me Rose. That's like... I'm going to have to have a lie down now. You're probably going down with the Titanic at that rate. <laughs> just, we just lie down here. Yeah, but she had no problem letting go of them. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, see ya. Oh, Mia, so, what about John Wayne? What was he? Marion Morrison. Was his Marion name. Morrison's Marion his Morrison. name. And, and Hollywood thought that mightn't work. We're going to call you John Wayne. Yeah, Martin Sheen was Martin Estevez, wasn't he? And he changed it to yeah, yeah. Um, Sheen. Yeah. And so then Charlie Sheen, his son, took the same name, but Emilio Estevez, his other son, kept with Estevez. Okay. Well, listen. I don't know what your Christmas Day viewing uh, would be over the years, but mm -hmm. uh, in in our house growing up, um, my mother would take. Uh, she was cooking the Christmas dinner, so she put all of us in front of the telly at two o'clock on Christmas Day, and we'd watch Christmas Day top the pops, mm. and that was her hours break to get everything in order so that we could eat at three. There won't be a top of the pops Christmas Day special. I thought there hasn't been one for years. No, it's always I been there. Been, really? It's I been there. It's ago. never stopped. The show itself stopped. The Thursday yeah. night show stopped in 2006. But the Christmas Day, with Christmas all the number ones of the year, was always there. And, and you oh. could sit down and watch. BBC have said, no, it's just going to cost too much. Because they don't just show videos. They'd get all the acts into the studio. Oh, so yeah. to decorate the studio, we can send them over a bit of tinsel, if that helps. Um, decorate the studio, bring the bands in. They said it was costing a disproportionate amount of resources. So what can you watch instead? I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just throw something there. And of course, this year is quite historic too. Because for in all our lifetimes, yeah. you, if you were watching the BBC, you watched Top of the Pops, followed by the Queen's Speech. This year, 
There okay. won't be a top of the pops, but there will be a king's speech for the first time in our lifetime. Elaine won't be tuning honest, in. Never watched, you won't be tuning in. I never watched the Queen's speech anyway. No. no. Did you? Did you get no. it? Even we didn't no. have BBC down. It was just. It, it just came on because. When yeah. You just BBC won't put on the Disney on Channel or something, guys. Don't need. I'm telling you, my father would have had words if we went anywhere near the Queen's speech. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> oh. Anyway, after the break, how to shimmy this winter? We're tackling metallics at the catwalk. This week on Ireland AM, we've teamed up with Lyrath Estate on the doorstep of Kilkenny City and have a break for two up for grabs. Nestled amongst 170 acres of mature parkland, Lyrath Estate offers guests a tranquil getaway just minutes from the famous attractions of the medieval city with its vibrant shops and Yulefest Christmas market. If you are looking for the perfect Christmas gift this year, then gift a memory and choose a Christmas gift voucher from Lyrath Estate in Kilkenny. Together with Lyrath Estate, we're giving you the chance to win a two-night estate experience for two guests with breakfast each morning and dinner on both evenings. The winner will also be treated to a falconry experience, afternoon tea and a spa treatment to really help you unwind. For your chance to win, just answer this question. Kilkenny is often called which of the following? Is it A, Granite City or B, Marble City? To enter, call 1550 999 093 or text BREAK to 57199. Welcome back. They say you learn something new every day. Well, today we'll be learning how to wear the finest metallics for those party nights, uh, be it ca casual or full-on looks. Stylist Laura Jordan is here to show us sparkly knits and detailed dresses that are sure to make a mark this silly season. And you've got your hot pants on. Absolutely. Yes, well, look, I'm going to I got, if you enlist, you have to soldier, as they yeah. say. So I better <laughs> wear the theme today as we start looking at metallics. And that basically is anything that has a sheen, has a reflective of surface mm -hmm. or a bit of sparkle. Um, I think we associate it mostly with sequins, but we're going to have a look at some examples of that, but also other examples of metallics that we see in different types of fabrics and styles. Okay, first off, what do we have? So first we have a typical traditional gold metallic sequin dress. This is, again, all about the material here. The yeah. cut is important because it must give a flattering finish to the body. This is from Cornucopia in Ennis. They have a huge selection of festive sparkle in their store or indeed through their website and social. What I like about this is the cut under the bust gives a lovely long length to the legs. So again, we want with this one to do all we can to bring the eye up because yeah. sequins can bulk if you don't have a good mm. cut, particularly in dress. So this kind of N-shaped cut is really flattering just under the bust and it has a sleeve, and it's not a short, scratchy sleeve, which really cuts the inside of your I arms when you're wearing sequins. We have to make sure that it is relaxed and loose, and that is exactly what you get in this dress here. So I quite like the way it sits and falls, and that is why I have chosen to include also the sequins, which we usually expect are going uh, vertically, yes, therefore yeah. a little bit more flattering. You yeah. never want to go near a horizontal sequin if you can help it, because it's just going to add bulk as it wraps around the body. And keeping the accessory simple enough. Really simple, exactly. So again, you, you, your sparkle is here in the dress. So we want to not have a, a lost earring, but at the same time not put too much into the uh, into the stones in it. So it's really simple, thick hoop here from Betty and Biddy. And similarly with the uh, pendant we've put with it, this is an addition to the dress. It's, it's, it's got a triple uh, drop on it, but would also look great over a knit as well. In terms of the colour, to, to add a pop, we've gone with the red bag here. This is from Jeremiah Higgins in Mayo, all available through their store and their website. It would pair nicely with a red lip if you decided to put yeah. some colour in in that regard. Um, and then simple with the watch as well. This is date watches, all available through their site and in Arnott's. Mm. Um, so again, just that really simple piece the finish is the shoes and they're catching the light even in here with that lovely sparkle across the toe. They have a block heel, slightly easier to walk in than a stiletto, which is helpful when you're out and about and you're trying to follow a taxi home. I know. <laughs> so Fine one even. And then we have this. This is the metallic in the uh, in, in that kind of print, which it's it's very interesting to see how the cut again comes into its own here. You have to have a decent cut for metallics, otherwise yeah. it will bulk, uh, you, up. bulk you, absolutely. Yeah. So with this, we've gone for the, the cinch at the waist, which is a really easy and, and simple way to pull this look in. And then the peplum is nice and forgiving if you're out eating, etc. So just really easy uh, finish. And this has a sleeve on it as well. This is available uh, through Carrick Dunn stores and indeed on their website and lots of other options. But that chevron finish again, you can see how it's 
falling in a vertical way, not what, horizontal. What does Chevron mean? Up and Sorry. down. So you see oh, it I almost know. like, it's like a... Um, not pedestrian crossing, but yeah. you know, I get it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm sure they love me. It's super that. flattering. Uh, I love he, the waistband. Exactly. It just, the V-neck, good for a larger bust as well. In terms of the accessories, we've gone for pearl. I love pearl. It brightens the whites of the, the eyes. eyes. So it gives that lovely little bit of lightness to the face and we've gone for the heart motif in it. And then the toggle chain here, just one lovely pearl sitting beautifully in the V there, um, which is, again, the rewear option. Pearl associated with daytime, that really. Gorgeous. Um, so again, just to have the that to complement the sparkle that we've got. And then this bag is an interesting circle shape, but it has the flat finish. I've come across bags that are full circle. You can't really put them down anywhere because yeah. they yeah. fall it's over. That one yeah, it's yeah it's it really lanker beautifully. It and then this is the Casio, which is their remodel for this season. Yes. Casio watches are I back. Know. They're I'm back. so excited. They <laughs> are back with a beautiful taupe straps. The leather strap again, if you want something slightly different to your typical uh, metal band and the you know black skinny jean a total staple for you know going out for I mean I think jeans and a nice top is the Irish phrase yeah, for you know what you're wearing so this is again if you want to update those there you have them these shoes I particularly love with a tiny bit of metallic on the back they are a velvet finish so they are beautiful for the festive season and also they'll take a because they're velvet they'll take a thick black tight that's and almost brilliant. create the look of a boot yeah, you know yeah. oh, um, which idea. is be very nice to elongate the leg as well more subtle sparkles here absolutely so we've gone for it now in knit so we've looked at it in a dress, we've looked at it in a top, and now we want to look at it in a heavier fabric that potentially could work day to night. This is from Les Coal Apparel, which is in Carrick Macross in Monaghan. It's in the shopping centre there, and it has a huge selection of brands, but in terms of just taking a simple knit but having something different so they've kind of got a point yeah. of difference yeah. in each of their pieces and there is a low level uh, um, you know they don't buy in bulk therefore yeah. you're kind of getting something individual in the store um, and the girls there are very knowledgeable to help uh, pick something just for you um, so this again has the metal uh, the metallic thread through it, but also there's sequins that have been threaded through so you're getting oh. a double edge there there's the actual metallic thread and the small little uh, sequin that's been added in it catches the light beautifully and just a simple lace cami under that and it actually need complements the silver jewellery that you put with it like the earrings yeah, on the necklace. I, I love putting silver yeah, together yeah. With, with a grey or a, another cooler tone yeah, so yeah. It, it blends well and again the silver pieces here from Betty Biddy the double star and the simple drop in the earring when you've got a bare neck you want to have something there but again a big chunky necklace looks cheap on bare skin yeah. you want to go fine and dainty and the lace and the, and the metal and the, the cardi are kind of doing enough anyway for that uh, the bag again the accessory we have with it and the, and the watch just just pulling together uh, that silver again this guy here from date watches and the bag from jeremiah higgins if you wanted you could do more casual crossbody in black mm. you know but just to jazz it up further i like the idea of, of being kind of warm out and about or if you're visiting Love houses like, i That's need to be you know what, toasty what yeah this, are they? Is, this is really interesting it's a it's a great indigo wash i've never seen that wash before it's a re it's it's soft yeah. and again it isn't that harsh denim mm. it's a soft flexy the boot cut works so well if you're balancing proportions so again we've seen it a lot over the last couple of months in store i love the idea of putting a really sparkly shoe with it but of course you can wear it with a, a boot as well if yeah. you wish but i want to take that cardi and really elevate and it keep that for ages i mean that'll work straight into the summer it's not just for christmas you said it's not just for christmas <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much laura we'll see you again in the next hour up next we're talking the impact of menopause on your sleep don't go anywhere Very welcome back. Menopause affects many aspects of a woman's life, one of them being sleep. Joining us now to discuss this further is Dr. Kiva Hartley from Menopause Health. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So sleep, everybody needs a decent night's sleep. Mm -hmm. And if you're a menopausal or a perimenopausal woman, my God, it can affect it so badly. Yeah, I don't know about you. If I'm not getting proper sleep, I'm... Uh... I'm not great to be around and I find I don't function half as well. So it's a hugely important topic. Yeah, a bit cranky and grumpy and all the dwarves in one little lump, lots, of other, <laughs> lots of other things too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, when it comes to uh, sleep and menopause or perimenopause, why is it affected by, by that stage of a woman's life? Yes, yeah, so it's really complicated actually. Um, 
I suppose there's probably a hormonal component that happens. So we think as our hormones change, our sleep pattern changes and how our brain functions, um, they change too. So uh, we know this from, there's been various research looking at this. Um, there was actually a study done only last year um, looking at women who'd had their ovaries removed. So they'd had an oophorectomy. And uh, regardless of what age they were, if they'd had their ovaries removed, they reported worse sleep disturbance. So there's a definite association between hormones and sleep. Mm. But I suppose if you look at menopause, as women well know, there's lots of symptoms that can happen with menopause. So things like mood changes, um, restless leg syndrome, and then of course things like hot flushes and night sweats, they can all negatively impact our sleep as well. Yeah. So it's really complicated. Yeah, particularly when it comes to hot flushes and night sweats, I mean, there's nothing worse. I mean, it happened to me only last year three times at night waking up with my pyjamas absolutely soaked for no yeah. good reason go oh my god here we go again it's not actually the flushes but it's like the chills that you get after it that is the problem now um how can that be helped well um i suppose when we're looking at sleep disturbance in menopause you want to treat the underlying mm. cause so you want to look at what's actually causing someone to have poor sleep so there's three different types of sleep disturbance that we see Women can report changes in falling asleep, so difficulty initiating their sleep. Mm -hmm. um, there's middle insomnia, where you get um, issues with staying asleep, maintaining your sleep. And then there's early morning awakening. So hot flushes and night sweats, they typically cause um, difficulty maintaining your sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's what the research would suggest, that, that although all three of these types of sleep disturbance are common at menopause, it's maintaining your sleep is the issue. So treat the hot flushes. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to falling asleep, anxiety can be linked to that as well. And, and anxiety, of course, can be a symptom of menopause, elevated anxiety. Yeah, again, often a hormonal issue in itself. We know changes in oestrogen can absolutely impact our mood, our levels of anxiety. Worse anxiety causes problems falling asleep and early morning awakening, actually. So having that discussion with the patient, figuring out what it is that's bothering them, what's keeping them awake, what's affecting their sleep, and then looking that as the root, you know, looking at that as the root cause and treating that, that's really important. Is there something that could you be lacking in various minerals and things like that? If we're looking at like restless leg syndrome, I've heard that anecdotally the queenine can help with that. Is that just a load of my eye or? No, not yeah. at all. No, it absolutely can. And, and people talk about using things like tonic water and different things like that. I think if you have restless leg syndrome, it's worth maybe having a discussion with your GP because mm -hmm. we treat that a little bit separately. Things like hormone therapy don't always improve that particular symptom. Because hormone therapy isn't a one one uh, one pill fits all really for, for want of a better phrase yeah. because there's so many different every single woman is different when it comes to their experience of menopause and perimenopause so perimenopause you have to tailor it quite individually so yeah. I mean if someone comes to you I'm a little bit off I, I think I'm menopausal perimenopause I have XYZ symptoms my sleep is off what do you do you, I presume you need a full blood count and bl bl hormone blood test done? Or well, that depends on the person. So yeah. if someone is under 45 and their periods have stopped, we want to know why that's happened. We don't just assume that it's menopause. Mm. And you can do blood work in that case to kind of confirm that. For women who are still having periods, blood tests show us nothing. Now, if they're complaining of poor sleep and they're fatigued and there's other things, you want to check their thyroid, yeah. their iron level. So you're looking for other causes, but hormone levels won't tell you anything in perimenopause yeah. for women still having periods because they're fluctuating so much. Yeah. What are we measuring? They're up and down yeah. like a yo-yo, basically. Totally. So there's no, you, you have to do it's like, so if you do it once in a month, it could be the different the following week. So it could be different day to day. Yeah, wow, day to day, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And it doesn't tell us anything. So if you say, well, my periods are really irregular and I'm getting hot flashes and my mood has really changed and, and uh, you know, other symptoms that may be there as well. If your FSH, the, the thing that we tend to measure in your blood, if that comes back high or low, it won't change my opinion of, of what's going on necessarily. So you have to look at a few different factors there. You look at the person sitting in front of you. Yeah. yeah. And what else can, can, how else can menopause affect your sleep? So, um, I mean, there's lots of different ways, but the most common is definitely with hot flushes and night sweats. Yeah. Um, urinary symptoms are the other thing That's that we see. That's the one I was going to ask now. Yeah. What does that cause? Does, uh, what, what, what happens with that? That's thankfully one I haven't had to experience just yet. No. I feel like Fingers every time crossed. I come on, all I do is give you bad news. No, all these I know. No, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, go, I'm good at the moment. I'm all good at the moment. But like, uh, is that something I have to look forward to as well? Does well, everyone experience know. it? No, not everyone. It's about 70% of mm. women. But what we know is that with changes in estrogen levels and that drop in estrogen, we see a change in in the vaginal tissue and the vulval tissue, but also in the urethra, which carries urine from your bladder to the mm -hmm. outside, and the bladder, and the muscle in the bladder. And um, all of this area is covered in estrogen receptors. Yeah. So when we lose estrogen, um, changes happen. We see dryness. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Apologies. But no, I'm, not, I'm but still, still, <laughs> still not there. It's fine. Except we can treat it. That's yeah, the good, good news. So, um, so we see changes in dryness. We see um, increased risk of urine infections. We see urinary frequency. So women saying, like, I have to get up at night to pee. 
You get more UTIs. You can. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. We see changes in the type of bacteria that grow locally, and so that can increase the risk of infections, um, amongst other things. But having to get up at night to pee frequently, that's obviously going to have a really negative impact on your sleep. And there's loads that we can do. We can treat that really easily. Oh, good. Um, now, we have a few questions in as well from our viewers, because we always do when we talk about this uh, topic. Lola says, I'm 44, I'm not sleeping. And when I got my blood tested, I was told my hormones are at a low level. Does this mean I'm perimenopause or is it menopause? Okay, so interesting. Yeah. So you can't diagnose perimenopause based on a blood test. Mm. If someone has had no period for 12 months for no other reason, like they're not pregnant, there's nothing else, and they're over the age of 45, we can safely assume that that's menopause. We don't need blood tests. Mm. And if they're under 45, I mean, we sometimes do them, but you don't need them to diagnose anything. Mm. Um, so for this woman, what is interesting, if you look at, there was a, a study done back in 2015 that showed, regardless of someone's age, if they had an, a high FSH level, which is the thing that we measure mm. related to menopause, and a low oestrogen level, they reported more sleep disturbance. Wow, mm. so that's it. I would say that that could be it in the case of this. So it may well be the case, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It, but it would need a long discussion to kind of figure that out. Kat yeah. says, I've recently experienced a lot of physical anxiety, which I wouldn't normally have been the case. Is this a symptom of my menopause? It is, unfortunately. I mean, it could be, you can experience generalised anxiety yeah. for lots of different reasons. Maybe she has other stressors or things at home. Maybe she's not sleeping and that's contributing to her anxiety. But unfortunately, it is one of the more common things that we hear women report as they go through the menopausal transition. Having a history of mood issues, having a history of postnatal depression or anxiety increases your risk. And brain fog accompanying it as well. It's really common. Find your, your purse in the fridge, your mobile phone in the bathtub. Anyway, not that I've done that. Mary says, preparing for menopause in the next few years, I'm perfectly healthy. What are the reasons not to go for HRT? That's an interesting question. Mm. Should we be preparing for what is inevitable for all women? I mean, should you, in terms of sleep, nutrients, that sort of thing, keeping ourselves as healthy as possible? Is there any way of making it less awful? Well, for I some think people? we should all be yeah. aiming for, you know, a good diet, a Mediterranean diet, being active, a mixture of aerobic exercise, weight bearing exercise, all the things you kind of know you should be doing. We shouldn't be smoking, you should be cutting down on alcohol. and caffeine and all the things we kind of look forward to over Christmas maybe but like just to you know again all the bad news I'm sorry but you know these are things that we aim for they're not yeah. things that we necessarily have to do every single day um you're setting yourself up for good long-term health mm. that's what you're trying to do HRT is not for everybody. Mm. There's loads of benefits to hormone therapy. It reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, it has a really, really incredibly positive effect on our bone density. Um, we think women probably live longer if they've taken HRT, but if you've no symptoms, if you're doing really well, if you're living a healthy lifestyle, then you might not need hormone therapy. So you can just keep yourself as healthy as possible and hope for the best. That's all you can do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kiva. <laughs> thank you for being the bearer of bad news for me once again. Anyway, if you'd like more information about anything we've discussed, you can visit menopausehealth.ie. And if you have any concerns about your health, always seek advice from your GP. We'll take a quick break. We're up in the kitchen next. Welcome back. It's that time of year where we're looking ahead to the big Christmas dinner. Well, joining us now with the perfect starter that won't fill your belly before the turkey main course is Lizzie Lines from Lizzie's Little Kitchen. Good to see you, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. Very Lizzie. festive too. I know. I put on my Christmas dress. You see, all set for the big Going day, which is all three out weeks. for today. Three yeah. weeks away yeah. today. So we're getting prepped. I am going the to prep make... starts now. Three weeks. Away. Yeah. <laughs> In some instances, it does. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to make today is a really nice prawn starter. It's not your typical traditional prawn cocktail, but it's a variation of it. Mm -hmm. But um, the really good thing about this is that we are panning our prawns, so we're getting a bit more bang for our buck. Prawns can be expensive. Yeah. So when you panne these, they kind of double nearly in size. Yeah. And you're putting less on the plate. And the other side of this is we're doing a really nice base of a salad, so if you have vegetarians, you could very easily yeah. replace the prawns here with a halloumi cheese and fry that mm -hmm. or a brie and put it on top. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of cutting out a lot of work. Okay. Because yeah. look, <laughs> the prep starts now. I know. Yeah. And, and so the thing anyway, is, for Christmas Day, you don't want a big start. No, you don't. You're definitely having dessert. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just open up the taste buds, what you want. Yeah, yeah you yeah, save the room for the dinner and the dessert. Just a little nibble yeah. after the glass yeah. of Prosecco. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, All right. So, so the first eight. thing we are going to do is I have some um, just normal flour inside here, mm -hmm. and I've covered it in the prawn in the flour, and then I'm going to dip it in some egg mixture here, and inside here I have panko breadcrumbs, and I also have some desiccated coconut. So that just oh. gives another element to the prawn yeah. again, makes it nice and crispy, and it mars really well with the dressing we're going to do. Okay. So, so you have to put a bit of flour over the, the prawns first, to, so yes. it takes more to the, exactly. the breadcrumbs. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, kids love yeah. doing stuff like that. Yes, They yes. absolutely love it. So he's making little chicken nuggets. And they love oh, eating them. They love eating them. <laughs> That's exactly too. how you yeah. make chicken nuggets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you'll see that I, I'm just going to do one because I have some more in the pan here. But you'll see that the prawn is completely covered. Yeah. And you'll see now these prawns that I've just started before we came on air oh, are starting to lovely. brown and golden beautifully. And we're just going to give them a little turn in the pan. But they cook quite quickly anyway. They don't do. They? Yeah. You need probably about three minutes on one side and then I turn it and give it another two minutes. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I shallow fry these. You can deep fry them if you want, but I just shallow fry because I think you're what's, using less oil. What's no, the difference? Is shallow when the, the oil doesn't go over? Right over it. Okay. Yeah, you're not okay. submersing it. Okay. Submerging it? Submersing it? <laughs> Submerge. 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 Yeah. Submerge. Submerge. That's the word I was Submerge. looking for. Um, so yeah, we have those now and we're cooking. We let those cook away mm -hmm. and we're going to move these over to the side. Okay. We're very organised this morning, you know. Wow. Just a piece of cake. This, yeah. is, this is the way it should be Christmas nothing, morning. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Because the cook wants to enjoy Christmas Day as well. Like the chef deserves her Christmas Day too. Yes. Or his. You know? or, and his, you know, or his. Or his. You know what's happening now, Cassia? Yeah. My aunts and my uncles are at home watching the telly. Mammy and Daddy are watching the telly and yeah. they're going, that's mine, Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah, they're like, oh. <laughs> so, Auntie May, Uncle Lee, Mum and Dad, this is what you're getting. Oh, fantastic. So, we're okay. just going to move on now to the to the dressing. So, I have some really nice, good quality mayonnaise inside here, as in full fat mayonnaise. We're not going. We're going the whole hog here <laughs> yeah. now. You know, go hard it's and go Christmas home. Christmas time. Yes. So, we have a little bit of sweet chili sauce, mm -hmm. um, some sriracha, so which is a little chili element. So, you have. The, sweet the sweetness from the chilli, you've got the creamy from the mayo, you've got the hot from the sriracha. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get some lime juice in there. And this is really... And if you wanted to, mm -hmm. you could throw a little old whacker or brandy into it. Uh, you're, you're so now you're, no, you're now speaking you're really talking. There now, Martin, <laughs> after hearing that. So now we're just going to mix that together. And we have our dressing made. Oh, it's really that easy to make your yeah, own sauce. I Usually yeah. I never. This is a different, this, it's just a different variation of yeah. a, a Mary Rose that I that I make particularly for these. Oh, so you see our prawns. Yeah. <clears throat> They're doing beautifully. And you can prep the salad ahead. I have some lovely uh, butterhead lettuce there. Mm. And I always do this the night before. So I steep it in salt, a little bit of lemon juice, and then I whisk it dry, you know, in the... In the salad bowl. spinner. <laughs> <laughs> you let me down uh, there now. No, so I, 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 <laughs> we don't, I don't so have well. a salad spinner in my house, so I couldn't save you. So we give it a good... But it's a great way to prep your leaves and to keep them nice. Wait, so say that again, you. So you, you steep them in salt yeah. and lemon juice. Okay. And then you spin them and you have them ready. Put a little bit of kitchen paper into a bowl and it soaks up all the water. Lovely. Mm. And you're away in a hack then with Lovely. your salad leaf dressing. So we have some lovely chopped mango here. Lovely. And like I said, you could replace those prawns now with a lovely bit of halloumi cheese and all of these will go really, really well yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Now, and... Oh, some red onion. Some oh, red yeah. onion. Yeah. And all the colours are beautiful as well, so... You're getting all those really nice... This will make me look really good on Christmas Day if I make this. Mm-hmm. So we get these two ready. So, are you in complete charge of the starters and main course mm -hmm. on Christmas Day? So, there's no tag team situation going on in the well, Lizzie Lyons household? Well, I've got two li great little helpers at yeah. home, Marie and Pierce, uh -huh. and Eric as well, of course, my husband, who's a chef, he helps out as well. Um, Noreen, my sister, comes Stevens this day. We call her the manager because she just oversees things. <laughs> <laughs> Does a bit of a taste test on things. <laughs> and away you go. So, we have some. Lizzie, get your here. finger out this year. Come on. <laughs> now. 
And I left my hair down today just because it was Christmas, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm leaning over There's no over need for hair next. This is telly. Nah. People accept that, right? Well, here we go. I forgot to ask, what oil do you use? I use the vegetable oil in that. Oil. Okay. So they're all ready to go. And you see how much they, they, the size of them has increased? Yeah. yeah. And you're getting really good value for your money because they are, you know, I know that they're expensive. Give a little drizzle of that. Yeah, like, that's, that's a big starter. Mm -hmm. Great start. A little bit. <laughs> it's all lettuce, Martin. It's all lettuce. Sure, won't fill your top. <laughs> now, your top. here we go. Yeah. And there you go. My good lady's at home and she's salvating looking and at this. Now, it looks hold on. Absolutely. Yes, so, sir. this is it. We're not going to see you again until New next year. year. Yeah. That's why I wore the dress, pulled out all the stops with the prawns. Have a look. It's all here and you're ruining us. Uh, well, look, have a fantastic Christmas. Thank you very much. We know the food Merry is going to be Christmas. bang on. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And thanks for, you're going to make me look really good on Christmas yes. Day, so thanks in advance you've, you've for that. Let me try covered. this. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, folks, full uh, mm. recipe details are up on our website. So and, crispy. of course, Lizzie's Little Kitchen is open this festive season. If you want to drop in to say hello uh, to everyone in this store. We'll take a quick break, but lots more still to come between now and noon. All this week, Ireland AM have teamed up with MacDees.ie to give a lucky viewer the chance to win a €2,000 voucher for their online store. MacDees.ie provide a massive range of products to suit all your Christmas home and garden needs. You can create your dream Christmas with a fantastic selection of Christmas trees, lights and deck the halls with wreaths and baubles. MacDees.ie also offer an array of quality outdoor items ranging from outdoor furniture, barbecues, fountains and solar lights and take great pride in being able to offer quality products at the best prices. MacDees, creating magic in every home. To be with a chance of winning this amazing prize, simply answer this question. Which plant is used as a traditional Christmas decoration? A. Poinsettia or B. Orchid. To enter, call 1550 999 200 or text PRIZE to 57199. Now let's check on your morning paper, starting with the Sunday Independent. Their headline reads, Public Believe Gangland and Provisionals Linked. The paper reports on a new poll which found that almost two-thirds of the public believe there's a connection between gangland crime in Dublin and provisional republicanism. Uh, the Business Post then opens with Microsoft Plan's private power plant and 900 million euro data centre site. It writes that the new gas power plant will be built on an not precedently large scale coming as a response to Microsoft's concerns about constraints on Ireland's energy grid. On the front page of the Sunday Times, Quinn, I know exactly who the arsonists were, the paper claims that former billionaire Sean Quinn has stated that he knows the identities of the people responsible for an arson attack on his former companies which caused substantial damage. Onto the tabloids and the Sunday world also opens with Quinn using the headline I didn't stab Quinn in the back. It states that Quinn recently called to the home of a parish priest who condemned the paymaster behind the abduction of Quinn's chief operating officer Kevin Lunny in his sermon, uh, believing him to be still at large. Discussing the same Quinn story is the Irish Mail on Sunday, which leads with Quinn Rao Priest. I was told I'd be next. The paper claims that the priest who challenged the culprits of Kevin Lunny's abduction in his sermon has since been warned, you're next. And the Irish Mirror opens on the headline, losing a child is the worst pain. The paper writes that the father of a teenager killed in the Chrysler explosion is still in disbelief over the sudden tragedy. And finally, The Sun on Sunday leads with a headline, Murder on the Dance Floor. The paper rides on the signing of state pathologist Mary Cassidy onto the new season of Dancing with the Stars, quoting Cassidy as saying it's going to be a challenge as I'm not used to just having fun. There you go now. What is a bit of fun though? You're sitting down Christmas morning. Yeah. You're, after, you're after breakfast. Yeah. Or even if it's in the afternoon, you're after dinner. And what do you do? Stick on the telly and watch your favourite Christmas movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you, but strangely enough, some of the most popular movies to be watched at Christmas time aren't actually technically Christmas movies. No. So if you were to watch one catch you know, on Christmas Day that isn't like some like Elf or something like yeah. Santa Claus yeah. or something like that, what, what is it? What movie would you associate with Christmas? We, my, myself and my sisters watch the Harry, do a Harry Potter marathon because it feels Christmassy. Yeah, well Harry Potter is actually in the list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so Harry Potter is number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Harry there Potter, any go. Harry Potter. But you have things like that. Harry Potter is kind of festive anyway. Yeah. Christmas if, all if, the if I went through Christmas 
Christmas and The Wizard of Oz wasn't on TV, I'd go, there's something wrong with this Christmas. Ding, 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 ding. Number two. <laughs> really? Number two in the list um, of, of the ones I have here, anyway, of what people watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list and I'm sticking to it. It's what people love to watch at Christmas. Because this it's a bit like Willy Wonka at Easter time. Yeah. yeah. You kind of yeah. watch it, but it, it, it's... If it's there at Christmas, that's yeah. all probably yeah. 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 Bridget Jones, interestingly enough, is oh. around for oh, Christmas yeah. time. And I think it's because of the Christmas jumper. Christmas jumper the famous yeah. Christmas. And it's, like, it's kind of rain well, and isn't cold. There? Isn't there a snow scene? There yeah. is. She's running around the snow in her knickers and yeah. there she is in her Christmas jam. He's all by herself drinking white wine. God, that it just reminds me of the season. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. But uh, The Princess Bride, which is my favourite film ever. Have you seen it? Is, is that the... the Hello. Men my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father prepared to die. No. Is that the Men in Tights movie? No. Same guy no, in it, but no, it. that's it. You don't know that either. No. That's um, uh, Robin uh, Wright Penn. Uh, she, Robin Wright, no, she was in... Um, oh, yeah, Sean yeah. Penn's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Sean Penn's daughter? She's the president. No, Sean Penn's no. wife. Oh. That was her very first role. She was only <laughs> <Okay>. 19. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what is one of the most popular ones as well? Annie James Bond. Oh, oh it's, it's, that makes it's sense. Stephen saying if there isn't a Bond movie on somewhere, again, I'm going, something's wrong with Christmas. It's something the whole family can watch as well. Yeah. So yeah. I, Another one we have, which is, and I'm glad it's on this list of not Christmas movies, by the way, because this movie is not a Christmas movie. Oh, it's not a Christmas go. movie. It's not a Christmas movie. Guess yes. what I'm talking about? Die Hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a Christmas movie. It's not. It's not. I, it's a movie I, set I, around I Christmas. I wouldn't be watching that not at Christmas. Christmas movie. No. Okay, so why are there Christmas songs in it? Because it's set in December. Doesn't mean it's a Christmas movie. But does that not make it a Christmas movie? Nope. I know Bruce Willis said it's not a Christmas it's, movie. Well, if Bruce but if Willis I'm listening it, to Let It Snow, Let It Snow nope, it's not a Christmas at the movie. end of the movie, there's too many it's guns. A Christmas movie. There's too many guns for Christmas. But you know what? Another one that I absolutely love around Christmas time is Matilda. The old Matilda. Yeah. yeah. Which is a quintessential Christmas movie. But I think Matilda the Musical I think, is going to overtake I, I think it by old, streets. Yeah, that's going to leave because it in Matilda's the Because Matilda's a place in everyone's hearts. Like, yeah. we all just love it Ma so much. Matilda the Musical has yeah. overtaken Black Panther in the Irish box office. It opened wow. higher. And you know what we have? L yes. Later, we have the star of Matilda <laughs> the Musical right here in studio. And I'm terrificially excited. <laughs> <laughs> terrificially. Uh, we are really looking forward to chatting <laughs> to Alicia in a few minutes' time. Thank but first, you know. Tipperary Crystal are celebrating the joy of giving with an emphasis on showing appreciation to your local community. You can check it out on tipperarycrystal.ie. This week, we're giving a deserving person in your community the chance of winning €3,000 worth of Tipperary Crystal goodies just in time for Christmas. So to nominate this special person, please email their name and and why they should win to irelandamcomp at virginmedia.ie. And as I mentioned, I'm terrificially excited, as I rolled down would say. <laughs> After the break, Matilda herself will be here. Alicia Weir is in the building. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> You're very welcome back. We all know the iconic story of Matilda, the schoolgirl whose magic powers help her fight back against the nastiest teacher in town. Uh, with the stage musical adaptation winning five Tonys and seven Olivier Awards, it was inevitable that the big screen would come calling. What wasn't inevitable, though, was that an Irish actor would land the leading role. Now, before we speak to the silver screen's new Matilda, Alicia Weir, let's see her in action in Roldal's Matilda, the musical. Do you want to hear about my first day? Yeah, I'd rather eat vegetables. It's official. I'm a genius. My losing streak is over. This fella comes into the lock. Good, he was. Great big bear of a man. And this bear of a man wants a luxury car. Oh, lovely. But the bear's dry. No, it's not a real bear. Do you have a luxury car? I've got two, boy. I'm a girl. One would have smashed in front and one would have smashed in back. All I've got to do is cut them in half Glue them together and bubs your chipmunk. That is bad. But isn't that illegal? And sort of, well, wrong? <laughs> well, Alicia Weir, is it weird looking at yourself on screen like that? Because it's such a huge success, you've beaten back Black Panther at the box office here in Ireland. It's very surreal because it's been going on like quite a long time since I auditioned. So for it, like everyone to be seeing it now in the cinemas is really crazy. But I'm glad that people like it because everyone like tried wor and worked so hard, like all the cast and the kids and the crew. So I'm I'm just really happy for everyone who's involved. Okay, it's beaten Black Panther. Okay, <laughs> can you tell me what school has been like since you went back? Um, well, because when I, like, because I started a new school, I went into first year this year, um, 
they were all like um, really like intrigued to see what was going on, but it kind of like because it hadn't come out yet, no. it kind of went over their head. So they were like, "Well done, we're so excited and all," but like <laughs> they just see me as Alicia and like that's cool. But I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a big fan of the book, though. So what was it like when you actually got to play Matilda yourself? Um, well, I hadn't seen the stage show and I'd read the book in school and I'd seen the movie. Um, I don't think when I got the call to say that I, was, I got the part of Matilda, I don't think you can really plan what sort of reaction you're going to have. So I was just really like shocked because I know that so many like incredibly talented kids must have auditioned. So like I was just really shocked and I just burst into tears because and my whole family was there. So they were just really excited. A little birdie actually sent us your reaction to what it was like <laughs> when you got the news. So this was it. All the times I've met you and how, um, how sharp your mind is and how great your concentration is. Um, what a good listener you are, all of these um, great skills that you've got, as well Thank as your you. terrific singing and everything. And anyway, so we'd like to offer you the part of Matilda in the film. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is so adorable. Alicia had you absolutely no idea. No. None at all. A little bit. Well, it was. I don't really know. I didn't want to get too excited just in yeah. case. So I was just like. Didn't really expect anything. And your family must have been so happy too. Yeah. What was it like that night in your house? It was on my mum's birthday. Oh, wow. What? Um, what a present. 10th of December. <laughs> so um, I think I was just, we were going out for dinner that night and um, I was about to do like a different sort of class and my mum was like, the director wants to do a call with you. And I just, I didn't want to get too excited because it was either a yes or a no. So when I got the yes, I was just really Oh, we could see excited. it. It's just amazing. <laughs> Whether, look, I, I, I know that was being filmed, but when the cameras went off, were there a lot of tears? Yeah. Definitely. my Because my whole family was there and we were just... There was definitely a lot of tears. So, it, was this the first time... Because you, you, we saw you in Darklands, which was a very gritty drama you hear on, on from Virgin Media. Matilda, it's Matilda the Musical. Was this the first musical you'd done? Um, I had done, like, musicals on stage and I was just... I think when I was born, I was just trying to follow in my big sister's footsteps because that's something that they love to do. And um, so I'd done shows, but I'd never done like anything like Matilda no, that went massive. singing as well. You were Molly and Annie uh, in the, was it Gaty or the? Um, concert Hall. Concert, concert Hall, hall the yeah. National Concert Hall, with the lovely Catherine Lynch who played Miss Hannigan. And Catherine Lynch is now with your sister in the panto, and your sister's playing who? Snow White. And she's the evil queen, how is it? So you're all with a Sammy very Sausages. Yeah, with Sammy, all a very musical family. <laughs> all a very, so I'm it must be Buffy. great fun in your house. Yeah. <laughs> now, what was it like actually singing and dancing? Because it wasn't just straight acting, and when you're on a film and a big feature film like that, there's huge pressure on you as well. Tell me about your handstands, because I believe you had to do some mad stuff on th that shoot. Your own stunts. I know. <laughs> well, um, so in like Matilda, she doesn't really dance. Her biggest number is naughty, where she does go on her hands on the roof and she does cartwheels around. So that was definitely one of my favourite scenes to film. Well, I'm not afraid you'd fall off. Was there stuntmen there to mind you? Definitely, yeah. just in case I <laughs> fell, like just. Yeah, that's the movie room. <laughs> yeah, you know. It took, a lot, it took long enough to make this movie. <laughs> if, if Alicia falls off the roof, it's going to take a bit longer again. But that looks like such fun. I mean, looking at the cast and all the girls and boys, the fun must have been excellent, but hard work, I'd say. Yes, the kids were just incredible. Like, all, every single one of them. So I'm just really happy that, like, they're getting the um, hype that they deserve because they did absolutely incredible. And I'm just... As you can tell from their dance numbers, they're just amazing. Poor El Matilda doesn't have the best set of parents in the world. <laughs> um, no, she doesn't. We, we saw the clip there, but your parents are two great actors, and the, the one in particular is Stephen Graham, that, that, that I'm thinking of. He's been in everything. So, so what's it like working with actors like that when you're coming into a big production like this for the first time? Well, because I'd never done like anything like and to be working with incredible actors was 
amazing. I was a bit nervous to go in, but they really taught me a lot and like I was really looking up to them all. Um, and just because there were so many people on the set that I didn't know about, um, and because there were so many people involved, so I was just really looking up to them and trying to be like them, and they were all really, really kind and welcoming to me. Mm. That's Stephen Gray. Why was his hair green? I do it. <laughs> I, mm, a trickery, and Matilda was involved in lots of trickery, of course, because she had magic. Yeah. If you had to have one of Matilda's special, special powers, what would it be? Um, well, obviously she can move things with her eyes, but I think if I could take anything from Matilda, and hopefully everyone that does watch the film, that what they can take from it is just to be strong and have lots of courage like Matilda. And even if you're young or you're an adult and you go to the, see the movie with your family, um, just to stand up for yourself and don't let anyone walk all over you mm. and just try to be st really strong and have lots of courage. That's, That's a great message, an absolutely yeah. brilliant message. Uh, another actor that we saw there, and we just saw a picture of her, is uh, the Oscar winner, Emma Thompson. So, was she as bad as Miss Trunchbull, um, or was she just a sweetheart? Definitely. She was definitely not like Miss Trunchbull, <laughs> like the <laughs> completely opposite of her. It was like two completely different people. You barely recognised her in that Yeah, picture. when I first saw her in her, like, all her prosthetics and her costume, I was a bit scared because... But I knew that like when she started talking and she went like this for all the yeah. kids to come in and give her a <laughs> hug, I knew that under all of it down there, there was really kind Emma. And when we were filming, it was like completely different people. When they said action, she'd switch into the part of Trunchbull. Um, but then when they'd say cut, she'd switch back into Emma. Uh, yeah. And did you get scared of her when she was Trunchbull kind of a little bit? Mm, yeah. That's why she's got the yeah. Oscar, yeah. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Now, what's it like though now for you? Because you're in school. Um, and then you're off to the States soon oh, for the, yeah. the, the US version of, of the premieres and all, which will be very exciting. So what's your life like now? Well, because it's now coming out, I think I go into two like completely different worlds. Like when I'm in school, I'm just Alicia and like they say like well done and all, but I'm just getting on with school and this week I just had exams. So like I just am with my friends and I really enjoy that. But I also really enjoy going into the completely different world where I'm doing all like Matilda stuff and talking about Matilda and I'm with everyone. So I, I enjoy both kind of. What's it going to be like though when loads of people are roaring after you and like, autograph selfies like all of us here this morning having selfies because you're Every one of us. Global <laughs> superstardom is on the way. Are you nervous? Um. Yeah. <laughs> We'll wait, we'll wait and see. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that the New York premiere coming up next week, that you'd actually get to skip your Christmas exams. But no, <laughs> they've already happened. No, yeah, they ha Well, they were the following week, but I was in London, but I did them this week. So. OK, so you still oh. have to do the exams. <laughs> That's yeah. just not fair. What's the good of being a global superstar if you have to do your exams? Yeah, I know, it's shocking. Uh, listen, that Matilda power you have of moving things, the camera crew might want you to do that when it comes to our next item, which is fashion, because four cameras have to move. Yeah. So she can put the eyes to work. What's, We're what's all happy the nickname? It's called Telly what? Telly, telekinesis or? Oh, telekinesis. What, what? Do they call, what do they call it? The nickname for it? Telly P. Anyway, I can't remember. <laughs> I have a written telepinesis. That was a funny one, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Alicia, thank you so Great much. Great to see you. Have a brilliant Christmas today. Thank you. And good and luck to your sister in the panto. She need all the luck she can get with I, Alan Hughes and the lads. I take it you're going. Yes. Okay. We'll give her grief <laughs> when she's up there on the stage. <laughs> All right. Alicia, good luck with the movie and, and enjoy yourself in New York. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely pleasure talking to you, young lady. An absolute joy. Uh, remember, you can see Alicia in Roald Dahl's Matilda the Musical. It's in cinemas right across Ireland right now, right across the world. Right, I know, oh my God. The pressure, Alicia, the pressure. <laughs> After the break, more Metallics at the catwalk. See you soon. You're very welcome back. Well, how do you wear the metallic trend without looking like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz? Stylist Laura Jordan is back with some advice <laughs> on how to not make us look like Tin Absolutely. Man. <laughs> well, it's not the look we're going for this Christmas. Uh, so it is all about either details or being careful about the cuts and shapes that you go for if you're buying a metallic item where the full mm. fabric and cloth is in that. So we're going to look at a way of adding a detail rather than the full look. And this is our first look, which we have this morning, is the details. Okay. So what we have here, Ava's wearing the typical Christmas colour of that 
berry tone and in velvet being a very big trend fabric wise but yeah. how we add the details we've added a metallic belt here again which catches the eye beautifully but also cinches the waist and gives us that thirds in the body that we want by lifting the legs mm -hmm. by placing the belt at that point so it is quite a flattering way of wearing this now this has a full buckle on it which you've just yes. put to the back because we feel it the, the flow of the dress is complemented by a flat front yeah. but it's basically a double wear belt as a result because it'll work equally well with the buckle um, and then we've just put the coat over the shoulders again because that is realistically what you're going to need going out and about um, this Christmas. So that finish again gives a piece of interest to a dress you even may already have and similarly for the shoes we've coordinated both of those elements. The shoes from Green's Shoes, the belt obviously from Cornucopia and we'll see the rest of the dress in a moment but that really easy simple thing. I'm going to wear a, you know, a flowy top and I'm going to just cinch it in at the, at the waist to suddenly bring it to yeah. you know festive or, or evening. And again pairing it with sil a lot of silver jewellery in this look as well. Yeah the, the silver it. goes with the the diamante that we see in the rest of the of the accessories. So again really simple just showing off that pearl drop with this the kind of larger diamante piece and then the uh, it's crescent and moon or crescent and star rather in that necklace. This is all from Betty Biddy. They have Christmas boxes also available online if you wish them to choose uh, the gift for the recipient. And then in terms of the, the dress again from Cornucopia and Ennis, they are retailer of the year actually in Clare. They are the boutique of the year for 2022, which is a fantastic accolade to have won. And they I, have a curve They're section. really good. I was there years ago. Yeah, oh, a lovely you. jumper, if yeah, I remember there you correctly. Go, there you go. Uh, and they also have a curve section up to 22. So there is a, a great diversity both in the store and online. And then that easy finish, it's just what you want with the detail of the uh, bag as well. I love the ribbon on the back of the yeah, jacket. Really the back of the yes. And it pulls it in to give in, yeah. a little bit of shape because that again is a fabric which can bulk too much yeah. otherwise. It, this looks incredible. So we've gone all out again. How do you, you get everything Christmas. so matching? Well, interesting with the matching because if you didn't have sequins on this dress, that coat would be the, an off tone. Does that make sense? Yeah. The sequins allow tonal dressing in a colour. Yeah. So they allow you to put different variants of red or navy or you know whatever and yeah. um, because color it picks up the shade exactly it just because it sparkles it'll have multi-tones in each of the um, in each of the garments so we've gone all out here this is from Carrick Dunn they have a huge selection both in their stores and online of exclusive labels to the brand um, all available for almost next day delivery as well if you can't get to their store so your typical very uh, classic what you'll have for years, yeah. wear for the festive season or for New Year's, etc. And we've gone all out here with the accessories to really kind of do the more is more with the toffee coloured stones in these uh, statement pieces, the earrings there from Betty Biddy. Again, good for like weddings if you're heading over the festive season yeah. and you want something to zhuzh up outfits you have already. And then the really simple tennis necklace that pairs with it from their tennis really collection. Really compliments bag as well. Well, that's we wanted to bring oh, the bag wow. in here. This is quite the showstopper. These are brand new in. Uh, just went online on Friday from Jeremiah Higgins in their store in Claire Mars and obviously in their website. Ooh, so that's very shiny. Very shiny. And there's three different colour options. We've gone with the gold here to pair with the watch. This is a Tommy Hilfiger timepiece from Date Watches available in Arnott's and through their website. You could, if you wanted, obviously do black tights and boots with this if you wanted yeah. to get another wear out of it or it suited more the occasion you're going to. But we've paired it with the strappy sandal. These are Una Healy, again, available from Green's Shoes in uh, Galway, Leicester, Kenny and uh, Limerick as well as their website. Website. So there is, we've gone all out because we said we would this it's evening, Christmas this morning, was going to say. Pairing um, it down yes. slightly now with Ursula. Exactly. So this, if you want to say, I want an element, like we said earlier, yeah. to have a look that isn't all out, full out. And um, so this is in the metallic thread that we see in the detail of this burgundy top. This is again from L'Ecole Boutique in Carrick Macross in Monaghan. Uh, they have sizes 6 to 20 and again a huge selection in their store where the staff will help you choose the item that works best for you. So we've got a really simple finish and fold here with the uh, wrist of the blouse. We've just paired it up to the elbow and folded it over. It gives you a th an illusionary three-quarter sleeve but you could also wear it full length if you wished as well. So there's a lot of options in that to bring that from you know, lunch to evening, etc. If you want something a little more understated. Again, with the jewellery, we've gone with a simple uh, CZ in a flower motif from Betty and Billy. This is actually, I think, from their bridal collection, even though I think it works really well for everybody every day. And then the um, double uh, necklace with the uh, link and the CZ necklace. So it's kind of a combo there. Really interesting. Again, it really stands out. Yeah, as when well, you've got yeah. the bare neck, yeah. it does kind of give it, you need something. Yeah. When you have metallics, you need something that kind of fights for the attention mm -hmm. of the eye. <laughs> 
dry um, and in contrast. And then we've gone with uh, really simple again with the metal tone watch and then the belt, the complement, or the, excuse me, the bag that complements it too. And there's lots of color variants on this too online. Um, and again, that one is just a simple clutch clasp. The winter white kind of cream tone and cord is everywhere. Yeah. And again, these work with a woolly jumper and ankle boots, but how do we make them work for evening or yeah. for something more formal? So we've put the um, really simple but effective metallic finish court shoe in those. And there's a little stud on the back as well, as you can see in a moment as our sleeve. So again, you can use shoes like these with something that seems quite casual as a trouser. And that's what you want to do is to use your accessories to change up your everyday. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much once again, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> well, up next, Kate Winslet is back on the telly and this time she's bringing her real life daughter along with her. So we're discussing this week's top telly after this quick break. This is a message for William Duquent. This is Bruce Coburn. Mr. Duquent. Mr. Duquent. I'm calling in response to the letters I've received from you. I'm not sure how you found me, but your letters constitute harassment. So please stop sending them. You're that writer of The Infernal Machine. I remember them pulling it off the shelves because of the shooter from Knoxville. So what do you want with William Duquent? I'll answer that after you tell me what he wanted from you. He wanted to know if I saw the same things in the book as he did. You say there's a hidden message in that book? For the whole world to hear. You can't make sense out of madness now. Can you, Bruce? You got a lot of questions about that book in yours. Who's sending the messages? Please check the number and dial Words. If you don't know how to play them, they'll sure as hell play you. Back. Kate Winslet is back on telly next week with her second big TV role in as many years after she took home the Emmy last year for Mayor of East Town. She's all right, that one, isn't she? Mm, she's not bad at all. <laughs> Joining us now is our own Kate Winslet, Megastan, Graham O'Till. <laughs> Graham, that's the first I heard of it, anyway. <laughs> well, there you go. All of Titanic Megastan. and Mayor of East Town. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, listen, Mayor of East Town was, was excellent. It was fantastic, to be fair. But she's back on our TV yep. and, and she's bringing her daughter along this time. Yes, a lovely bit of nepotism in this <laughs> one. Nepo babies, we were, we were Calling them. So I Am Ruth is out on Channel 4 on Wednesday. It's a TV movie and it actually covers a pretty dark subject matter in terms of she is trying to help her daughter who is struggling with addiction to social media and all the mental health aspects that come along oh, with that. Yeah. And as you said in that, her name is Frey in there but Mia is her actual daughter. But they claim it isn't nepotism. The director wanted her daughter for the role. But that's what they say online that's anyway. So I don't really know. Because we've seen it with them. Um, uh, Maud Apatow in Euphoria. Yeah. We were talking about Made on Netflix. Minnie Driver's daughter was yeah, in that. Yeah, but yeah. to be to be fair, they give incredible performances, yeah. and it's not to say that they don't work hard. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Her mom if, is Kate. If, <laughs> if my dad was Brad Pitt, I would hope he would put me in a movie oh, yeah, as well. Yeah. To be fair, it's the very minimum. Exactly. You know? but, but but they are saying, look, the 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 director heard that our daughter was an actor yeah. and yeah. wanted to see her and thought she'd be great for yeah. the role because yeah. there's there's obviously an actual chemistry yeah. there between and I'm mother sure, and yeah, daughter. I'm sure they will because and this is very real story. Like I'm sure a lot of people will be able to relate to absolutely. this. Absolutely. And know? if you actually, oh, you only get a little short snippet off in the trailer, but you yeah. can see. She knows what she's doing. She's yeah. a very good actor indeed. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. going to be a really, really good. And is it now the norm for a lot of big screen actors, because she's an avatar too, transitioning into more TV roles because they're more interesting, more challenging? Well, well, I was actually listening to a podcast recently with Quentin Tarantino and he yeah. was saying that how the Hollywood now is basically dead. It's the Avengers as the only yeah. thing keeping it really alive. And there's no real depth in a lot of the movies that are coming out. Yeah. So TV is where a lot of the directors and the big movie stars are going. And you can yeah. see it. The huge television series are coming out week after week after mm. week. So I think that's where all the real depth is. Oh, yeah. On like a, a, like a, a two hour, two and a half hour yeah. cinema feature, you've got six episodes. Yeah. yeah. You know, to, to put your craft to its very best. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can understand why. Yeah. There was a time when if you went to TV, you could never go back to film. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, For sure. Every, like, every standalone episode these days in a TV series is like its own movie. Yeah. It's like an hour long and uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are moving to it. We've got okay. another good one. Ro Rosie Malloy gives up everything. I saw the ad for this last yeah. night. It looks pretty funny. This is a bit more lighthearted now yeah. than that one. Yeah. A black yeah. comedy, they call black it. Black comedy, right? yeah. So basically, it's got a great cast. Sheridan Smith is Rosie Malloy in there. But her mm -hmm. parents are played by Ardell O'Hanlon and Polly McLean, who are... Dougal married Mrs. Doyle? Dougal and Mrs. Doyle are the parents in this one. So basically, Rosie Malloy, she has a horrible time at her brother's wedding. She embarrasses herself and she decides that it's time to give up everything. 
drink, drugs, sex, bad food, cigarettes, the lot. And she's going to completely change her life around. It'll be interesting to see Mrs. Joel play her mom. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised that she's, she's, she's holding a can of that scene rather than a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> this is really messing with my head. So there she is. <laughs> yeah, the two of them are together. Who would have thought, what was it, 20 years ago, that the two of them would end up being on screen partners? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's mad. It, it, it is fantastic. Now, it, it does, it's dealing with addiction, so there's a very mm. serious side to it, but it's not going down no. the uh, graphic. No, uh, it's. Gory. It, yeah, it's kind of more of a social look at it in a slightly humorous way. As you say, it's a dark comedy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not getting into the nitty gritty of addiction or anything like that. You can see her in the rehab, but trying to escape and her friends helping her try to escape. It's kind of that way in kind of client. And uh, yeah, it looks really, really good. And Sheridan Smith is lead and she's fantastic as well. Former okay. BAFTA winner. Okay, that's, uh, that's on this week. That is on this Wednesday at 10 on Sky Comedy, but you can see it on now as well. Okay, okay. right. Um, Too hot to handle. Oh yeah, because my son, my, I, I've got a son at home who, who wants Wants to be on Love Island, but he does not want to be on Two Hot to Handle. <laughs> oh, it is. He like the, this show. It's juicy, but it got me through having COVID. I literally <laughs> stayed about ten days, finished the whole season. It was class. My so. favorite part of this is so basically the premise is it's a dating show. You put ten hot singles into yeah. a villa, but the premise is they can't go near each other. There's a hundred thousand no. dollar pot, and every time they kiss or touch, it drops. But how they lure them into it, they pretend they're on a different dating show. So they get Mario Lopez, pretend they're on a MTV dating show, and then <laughs> once they're in there, they go, sorry, you're actually on Too Hot to Handle. Oh, it's, it's, four. Four. it's like a little Alexa that says, you're in, like, whatever, welcome to Too Hot to Handle. And they're like, no! Yeah, so I think Lana is the name of the little Alexa part in there that Lana, communicates with yeah. them in there. However, the thing I don't like about this is, it's like, at the end, the producers choose who the winner is based on who has the best growth in there. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember in season one I was watching it. It was the two people that were all over each other the most and lost the most money, which ended up who winning. Won? Who ended up winning the kit yeah. at the end. And people were like, what, is, what even is this? It makes no sense. So, yeah. Surely it's the person who, like, handcuffed his own hands. <laughs> or her hands <laughs> no, they, to their they, they kicked them out. They kicked them out. <laughs> They'd be like, no, you don't want to get involved and get to know anyone and connect with but anyone. But you're not supposed to be touching, kissing. I know. No, no. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very weird. I think the producers are involved in a lot. But you see, because it's a Netflix dating show, it's yeah. not like the ones you watch live where you can vote. Yeah. So they have to yeah. vote them out okay. somehow. So this is the way they've kind of got around people voting, watching it live. My son told me that the pot is 100 grand. Yeah. And yeah. The, peop the, the, the people who won it <laughs> went away with 2,000. So every time they kiss, no. it drops by 3,000. And, really? and, and the more they do, the bigger the drop. Yeah. So if they're getting a little bit hot and <laughs> spicy underneath the duvet, it could drop by about uh, 10 grand. Points, so. yeah. OK, all right. Not uh, worth it. Anyway, that's on Netflix. That's on Netflix. Wednesday, first five, and the following Wednesday, the next five. OK, I'm looking forward to this, The Suspect. Yes, it's called a high-stakes crime drama featuring Aidan Turner. Do I liked Aiden? it with that voice as well. Yeah, 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 of course, high-stakes crime drama. Aidan Turner, very good-looking Irish actor. Yeah. He's been Paul in Dark. Uh, Paul Dark. That's the one, and The Hobbit as well. Um, but his name, I love his name, Dr. Joe O'Loughlin. He's a psychologist, a good Irish name in there. Even Fine, though he's Lachlan, a British yeah. man. So he's a very successful psychologist. However, when he gets a Parkinson's disease diagnosis, it kind of turns his life upside down. Okay. He then gets brought in by the police to help them solve a very disturbing murder. But the better he is at helping them solve it, the more he becomes the chief suspect. Whoa. So it's kind of like the broad go, this guy will be good. Wait a, second, wait a second, you're too good. Yeah, he knows you're too now, much. Yeah. You're now the chief suspect. So we're kind of in between this of, is he just really, really good at his job or did he actually kill the woman? That's dropping on, on Virgin Media more from Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. I think there's six episodes in that one. OK. And then we have, the last well. but not least, Little America, season two. Little America. So yeah. this is Apple TV on Friday. And Apple TV, it took them three years to make eight episodes. The production value huh? is wow. high in this one. Was this season... down to the pandemic or just...? No, like, if you... I was watching the trailer and, of course, season one as well. It is so highly produced. So it's Little America. It follows eight different stories. It's a window into eight different lives of immigrants trying to go after the American dream. Now, it deals with dark enough topics yeah. in terms of um, homosexuality and de deportation, but it kind of ends with high positive okay. notes so as well. See a happy yeah. ending. At the yeah, end. it's supposed okay. to be optimistic, which is kind of needed in today's world as well. Yeah. You look what's happening in America. It's a nice look at social commentary in America, but with a positive outlook at the end.
OK, mm. and, yeah. and that's uh, Little America will be able to find on Apple, Apple TV, TV on Friday. This Friday. This okay. Friday, yeah. All right, so okay. that's the TV sorted for Here the week. There we go. Thank yeah. you very much, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Good to see you. No, no. All right. Uh, earlier, we made a perfect prawn and mango Christmas start. It was just delicious. If you want to recreate it at home, here's what you need to do. Start by mixing the desiccated coconut and panko together in a separate bowl. Dip the prawns individually into three bowls of flour, then eggs, then coconut and panko mixture. Place the prawns on a medium heat pan and fry on both sides till golden brown. Divide the lettuce between six bowls. Place the tomatoes, red onion, cucumber and avocado around the bowls. Divide and place the cooked prawns in the middle of each of the bowls. Top with the dressing and a sprinkle of chopped coriander. Coming up in Ireland AM tomorrow, ahead of a new three-part series looking at abusive relationships, we hear one woman's story. Uh, this year, give a gift that saves energy. We'll round up the best environmentally friendly gadgets and gizmos. And there's crafty DIY ideas to wow your visitors over the Christmas. Ireland AM is back from 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Cool enough. Uh, a yeah, few some, bits and pieces yeah, going on. And... Greg says, I'm with Martin Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Bruce Willis saves Christmas. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I think. OK. And Grandy says, I read that Olivia Wilde, an American, picked her stage name after Oscar Wilde, the Irish writer. She's never even been here. What's she on about? <laughs> she did... She studied acting in the gaiety, for God's sake. She, she did, lived yeah, here yeah, for she ages. Been here all right. <laughs> yeah, she has. Polly on Nepo Babies. Are they saying the director wanted to cast Kate Winslet's daughter by complete coincidence? I'm sure she's a good actor, but call it... It is what it is. Ooh. And Sandra yeah. says, Alicia is absolutely adorable. Alicia we were a star of Matilda the Musical on the couch a little while ago. What well, an absolute spoke pet. so well. She's, She's an inspiration to kids all around Ireland. World fame just like that. OK, and you know what? I'm the most unassuming person in the world. Little lo lo lovely little dog. I need to say hello to my father's friend. OK, do. And that's Go a man called her. Jerry Crossan in a place called Killicreeny in Cootill in County Cavan, who's officially becoming an 80s boy tomorrow. OK. Oh, so during the 70s, uh, Jerry used to... Myself my brother, and we'd head up and we'd... Cut, turn and bail hay and go to watch Cavan in the championship. They had a good team then. Jerry's a big GAA, a uh, big Cavan supporter. So happy birthday, Jerry. Happy birthday. Yeah, cut and turn and bail and hay the old way. Bye. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Bye.